Well hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be jumping into my first ever DS ROM hack and we're immediately going to be picking one of the best ones in Pokemon Renegade Platinum. This is what a normal Pokemon game should actually look like. Pokemon Renegade Platinum does so much to the regular Platinum and makes it look like it was made by some children. For example, some areas in Platinum were never really used that much, like the Regigigas Temple or the mansion right below Hearth Home City. Well, in this ROM hack, they have actually implemented side stories that you have to go through through the game to actually go ahead and do some quests there. A ton of quality of life improvements have also been made to the game, like TMs are made unlimited, and regular Platinum did not run that well on the regular DS, so this game actually has a speed up patch that makes it run way smoother. Besides that, trainer battles have also been made way harder than in regular Platinum, but I'm not talking as competitive as Radical Red or as hard as Emerald Kaizo. So I'm going to be jumping into this game with a Cyrus team. I feel like this is going to be the perfect ROM hack to use this in, but Cyrus does only have 5 Pokemon while most Pokemon trainers in this game do have 6. His team consists of Weavile, Crobat, Houndoom, Gyarados, and finally Hunchcrow, so not a bad team whatsoever, but we are very weak to rock types. Anyway, with that out of the way, don't forget to smash that like button. Let's try to aim for 12 likes for Cyrus. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. Of course, we're going to be naming ourselves Cyrus and our rival is going to be myself. Since a lot of people have been saying, please play on set mode, I will actually do it this time, okay? No more scrub. As we go to Barry's house, we immediately see that there's something different here. It's Barry's dad back from the battle frontier. He doesn't add much, but it's just nice to see that his dad is actually home for once. It doesn't really matter what Pokemon I pick, so I just pick Chimchar, beat up my rival's Piplop with some embers. I then travel to the lake to find an imposter of myself. But don't worry, we'll make sure he steps down. And then we go to the catching tutorial, which has actually been replaced by a battle with Dawn. So you have two rivals in this game, which is way better than just a regular one, in my opinion. It actually gives Dawn some kind of purpose, which I find very intriguing. She does have the starter weak to you, which is Turtwig, so I easily beat that up. And then I get my Pokeballs, which means that I can capture my real starter. And I'm going to be starting off with Sneasel. And I was super lucky because when I captured it, it actually was holding a Quick Claw, which can come in handy later on. And I name it Noir, which is French for black. As we reach the next city, we also get our Apple Watch, but we don't have to fight any clowns here, he just gives it to you. We then have our first real rival battle here. And Zwigo right here has three Pokemon already, which are Starly, Munchlax and of course Piplop. Doesn't sound all that bad, I know, but the Munchlax has Rock Tomb, which is super effective against my Sneasel, so I lost a couple of times. But after I learned Feint Attack, this battle was a breeze. So after defeating my rivals Starly, Munchlax and Piplop, I decided to capture my second team member, Zubatman. And after capturing Zubatman, I took on all the remaining trainers and I went over to Rourke. But as I said in the intro, our team is very weak to rock types. And of course, the first gym leader has to be rock type. Which means that we of course automatically get destroyed. I know I have two Pokemon, but Zubat can basically only confuse his Pokemon and that's about it. The rest of its moves are useless against Rourke. There was this one annoying move on his nose pass. What was it again? Oh yeah, Thunder Wave. The most annoying move ever because after he uses Thunder Wave, I can't outspeed any one of his other team members. Which means that I'm pretty much dead. So I decided I can't lead off with my Sneasel because of the Nose Pass, so I'll have to take it out with my Zubat's Confuse Race. After confusing the Nose Pass a couple of times, I just had to use a few more bites in order to take it down. Next up was Bonsly and I don't really need Zubat anymore, so after using a couple of bites, I do go down, so I switch in Sneasel to go for the Metal Claw and the Bonsly missed its attack, so one more Metal Claw and it's down. My attack then went up and I proceeded to one-shot Cranidos as well. Geodude gets destroyed by an Icy Wind, Onyx is no different. 
And last up is Larvitar, which we take down with Middle Claw as well. And just like that, we defeated Rourke, which means that we can move on to the Valley Windworks to take on Mars. To be honest, I don't even like Mars that much. I'm more of a Milky Way kind of guy. But Mars' team is just a little bit different from normal. She has her regular Zubat and Perugly, but she has an added Yanma and a Bronzor on top of that. But this battle was very easy because I was able to beat all of her Pokemon with only my Sneasel. That means that I one-shot a Bronzor with Fain Attack. Yanma went down by an Ice Shard, Zubat as well, and then Perugly got killed by a Fain Attack critical hit. As I was traveling, my Zubat also evolved into a Golbat. We then reached the forest where normally you would just have to go with Cheryl, but here you have to battle her as well before you can take her with you. Her team consists of a Drifloon, which Golbat can take care of, a Wilmer, which manages to destroy my Golbat with some Rock Tombs, but luckily Sneasel can finish it off with Ice Shard. Makuhita comes out, I hit an Ice Shard, but it doesn't take it out, and it hits me with a Brig Break, leaving me with only 3 HP, but next turn I take it down. Last up is of course her Mighty Chansey, but with that weak defense stat we can one-shot it with Faint Attack and go through the forest with her. Eventually we do reach the next city where we meet up with our Imposter once again, but he runs off like a little chicken. And so I try to go to the gym, but the gym is closed and Gardenia is somewhere in the snowy mountains. So I risk my life to find this girl and eventually send her back to her gym. After almost freezing to death, we do eventually reach her gym. And my team should be super well built to take on Erica, right? With Golbat and Sneasel both being super effective. Well, it didn't go as smoothly as I expected. She has a Rose Raid with extra sensory, which can easily take care of my Golbat and a Breloom with some fighting type moves which also do a lot of damage on Sneasel. And of course a bulky Grottle with Leech Seed which can get annoying as well. But besides that, the team was easy to take down. So she starts off with a Belossum which I can take down with my Sneasel's Ice Shards, then Breloom comes out, and I predict that it is gonna go for a Mac Punch so I go into Golbat and take it down after that with a Wing Attack. Rose Raid can easily take me down here with two extra sensories so I go for the Hypnosis to put it to sleep. It wakes up very quickly but two wing attacks can still take it down. Next is Tangela and this thing has a rock type attack so I go for another hypnosis to put it to sleep and then finish to take it down with two leech lives. Grottle comes out and puts a leech seed on me. Then I go for the wing attack, he protects and I go for another wing attack to take it down. Her last Pokemon is Cherim and that thing can't stand a chance against my Golbat so we win our second gym badge. Now we can go to the Team Galactic building to beat up Saturn. Her team really isn't that hard because she has a Golbat, a Skunk Tank, a Tangela and a Sableye. While Sneasel takes care of Golbat, Skunk Tank and Tangela with Ice Shards, I do eventually go down to Sableye, so I switch in Golbat and finish off the battle to save this man's Clefairy and Benary. He then gives us a free bike and then I totally forgot to pick up the old rod and I finally go back to pick it up and get myself our third team member Magikarp the King even though it's female. We can't actually go to Mount Coronet until we go and lead this girl out of this cave. I totally forgot that this event was even in the main game because I'm pretty sure it's in normal platinum, but it tucked it away so badly that no one really remembers this, I'm pretty sure. Her battle was nothing special though, we easily sweeped her entire team with Sneasel's crunches. After leading Mira through the cave, we can finally move on to Mount Coronet, but before we enter, we have another rival battle, this time with Dawn. But Dawn was something else, because her team was not easy for me to take down. She had a Clefable, which of course counters my Sneasel totally with a Moonblast, and even my Golbat couldn't really hurt it because of its bulk. I also haven't really found a good grinding spot for Magikarp yet, so it has not turned into a Gyarados. Her Grottle also gave me some trouble, but not as much as Clefable. Clefable was definitely the heart factor in this battle. Anyway, after a couple of attempts, I was able to take her down with some RNG luck. She starts off with Piloswine, which my Sneasel can take down with two Metal Claws after getting hit with an Avalanche. Next on out is Lopunny, and normally Lopunny is not fighting type, but in this game, she is. So I'm predicting a jump kick on Sneasel, so I switch in Magikarp to let it go down. 
Then I switch in Golbat, I proceed to put the Lopini to sleep and then take it down with some air slashes. Next on out is Clefable, so I put it to sleep with my Golbat, then switch in to my Sneasel and finish it off with two Metal Claws. Now the final Pokemon is of course Grottle, and so I try to take it down with Sneasel but it wasn't enough, the Seed Bombs took me out so I switch in my last hope Golbat. And even though I'm paralyzed, I still managed to outspeed and take this thing down. That's Dawn out of the way, so I go to Hard Home City, but before we reach it, I actually have to fight a Aeron from the Elite Four, and I get absolutely smacked by his bug types. But that's normal because you don't have to beat him to proceed. I then finally reach Fantina's gym where my Magikarp finally evolves into a Gyarados. Fantina was pretty easy. She starts off with Drivblim, so I start off with Golbat and put it to sleep and proceed to take it out with some crunches. Then Miss Magius comes out, who is able to hit a power gem on me before I put it to sleep with Hypnosis. Then I hit two crunches before it wakes up and takes me down, so I have to switch in Sneasel. So I go for the crunch, easily finish it off. Then Gengar, also an easy one shot with crunch. Dusclops then comes out, so I switch in King to get an Intimidate off, and I immediately get critical hit by a Shadow Punch taking me down. So I go back into Sneasel, and two crunches, a Hyper Potion, and an Ice Shard later, and she has to go into her next Pokemon. Pokemon Bonnet. Then last up is Spirit Tomb, so I stay in with Sneasel of course because I don't have anything else left. Go for the Crunch, my Crunch gets disabled, I go for the Metal Claw but it barely does any damage, she heals up and three more Ice Shards win me my third Gym Badge. While we're here, I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite ROM hack if you've ever played one? Because I want to see what you guys like. Of course, we know what comes next, the rival battle with ourselves. His first Pokemon, like always, is Staravia, so I lead off with Golbad, and I easily win this matchup. Next to out is the thickest boy of them all, Snorlax, so I stay in, put it to sleep, and crunch it to death. Then his Primplup comes out. By the way, penguins are the best birds on earth. Fight me. So Golbat takes that thing down with three air slashes. The last Pokemon is Heracross. And of course, another few air slashes later. And we have defeated our rival again. Now normally we could just move on to Maylene here. But we get a side quest here about Team Galactic taking on the mansion south from here. So we have to go ahead and scare them out of there. As we arrive, we see that some baby Pokemon and Clefairies are destroying this man. Sometimes life just do be like that. And just as we think it's over and we're trying to leave, we get stopped by another Team Galactic admin and his sidekick, this old man. But before we take them on, I do have to mention that my Golbat did evolve into a Crobat before this battle. And of course, with Crobat and the help of our rival here, we can easily overpower them without too many problems. I can't show every major fight because otherwise this video would go on and on for hours just because of the sheer amount of content that is in this game and so after saving the mansion we can finally move on to the fourth gym leader Maylene and Crobat is about to put in some work because Sneasel really isn't built to take on any fighting types and so we start off the battle Medicham versus Golbat one air slash and it's down already next on out is Gallade so I go for the air slash and manage to flinch the Gallade and next turn, of course, another one is going to take it down. Next to that is Infernape, another couple of air slashes and it's out of here. Then Lucario came out, which I know I can one-shot with Air Slash, I can't even two-shot it, so I put it to sleep, then go for some Air Slashes until it wakes up, then put it back to sleep, and one more Air Slash finishes it off, which means that she goes into Toxic Croak, which manages to take down my Crobat, so I have to switch in Noir, and I managed to get a critical hit with Ice Shard taking down Toxic Croak, and then her final Pokemon is Machamp with a Toxic Orb. So I start off by going for Icy Wind with Sneasel to lower its speed, but we immediately go down to a close combat, but this did lower its defenses, which means that Gyarados can come in and sweep up with Bounce. We then meet up with the most useless character in all of Pokemon, Looker. Then we capture our next team member, Houndara, which I'm going to be naming Bob, even though it's a girl once again. And then finally, I go back to the Ghost Tower to get myself a Murkrow as well. That completes our team after naming it Pepe. But yet again, we can't take on Crash Awake yet. We have to go through the entirety of the muddy route 
before we can take him on because at the end he's standing there you just talk to him and he goes back to his gym again another route that wasn't really utilized in the regular platinum but was totally utilized in this game i then looked into my bag and saw a dusk stone and immediately evolved my murkrow into hunch crow we then go back to crasher wake's gym but before we can enter we have to fight Zwigo again. Damn, it's pretty weird saying your own name. As we get into the battle, it's Staraptor versus Gyarados, so I set up a Dragon Dance and proceed to one-shot it with Ice Fang. He then goes into Breloom, so I go for another Ice Fang, taking it down to its Focus Sash, but then we get taken out by Rock Tomb. I then go into Pepe, but I get outsped and one-shot because I'm way too low level on him. Then it's Bob's time to shine and a Heatwave finally takes down Breloom. Heracross then comes out, so I go for another Heatwave before going down to a Mega Horn. Sozu Batman comes in and finishes it off at Air Slash, then Snorlax, the thickest of them all, once again comes out. So I put it to sleep and drain its life with Leech Life. Arcanine is no problem either, putting that thing to sleep, then crunching it to death. And last up is Empoleon, who goes down the same way as Arcanine, with some sleeps and some crunches. Now we can move on to Crusher Wake. He of course specializes in the water typing, which should be no problem for my team. Of course, the man, the myth, the legend starts off with Quagsire, so I lead off with my Gyarados, set up some Dragon Dances and proceed to hit a bunch of Ice Fangs and Bounces because the Quagsire keeps on healing up with Recover. Eventually though, it isn't able to keep up anymore and we take it down. I would have gone for Aqua Tail, but it did have Water Absorb. He then sends out his own Gyarados, so I go for the bounce, get the paralysis, he gets stuck in paralysis and I finish it off next turn with Ice Fang. Floatzel then comes out and puts an end to my Gyarados with Aqua Tail. So I go into Zubatman, put it to sleep, and then finish to drain all its life with Leech Life. He then sends out Sharpedo, which is the dumbest thing he could have done, so I Leech Life it, but it has a Focus Sash and is able to hit me with Waterfall, but a Crunch after that takes it down. The last two Pokemon, Polyrath and Ludicolo, both get destroyed by my Zubatman as well. Of course, after getting our Gym Badge, we meet up with Cynthia, who gives us the Secret Potion to get rid of some Ducks. And after doing that, we almost reach Old Lady Town, but before we do, we have to fight Dawn again. But I'm not gonna lie, I was basically able to sweep four of her six team members with Gyarados by setting up just one Dragon Dance and then Aqua Tailing most of them. Eventually though, the Vaporeon did take down my Gyarados, but then Sneasel took care of that with some crunches after it was paralyzed. And so after defeating Dawn, we finally meet up with our imposter. But he made the mistake of leading with Crobat, so my Sneasel obliterates it with an Ice Punch. He then actually sends out a Magnezone, which is something we don't have, and takes down my Sneasel after I hit it with a Crunch. So I swap in Houndoom, go for the Flamethrower, and finish off Magnezone that way. Next up is Hunchcrow, so I start off by Willow Wisping it to lower its attack, of course. Then I'm able to hit one more Flamethrower before going down to Brave Bird. But the Hunchcrow also goes down to its burn. The last Pokemon is Weavile, so I send in Gyarados, set up a Dragon Dance, and finish off this dirty imposter with Aqua Tail. Now normally we could go to Cantaleaf City but that is being guarded by a guard so we have to go to the Paul Park first. I had to beat up these two people that I don't know and then they give you some tea which you have to give to the guard in order to proceed. After this we finally reach Cantaleaf City and before we take on Byron of course it's another battle with the rival. Of course, the first Pokemon that we face is going to be Staraptor, so one Ice Punch is easily able to carry us through that. Heracross comes out and I'm predicting a fighting type move, of course, so I switch in Crobat, go for the Brave Bird, and easily one-shot it. Empoleon then gets put to sleep by my Crobat, I switch in Gyarados and set up a bunch of Dragon Dances. I then proceed to easily take out Empoleon, Breloom and Arcanine before his last Pokemon Snorlax comes out and takes me down. He is then also able to take down my Noir, Bob and Zubatman before Pepe can come in and finish off Snorlax once and for all. Then we see that Byron's gym is actually not open because Byron is training at Iron Island. So we have to go through the entirety of Iron Island with Riley before we can actually take on Byron. This includes an actual battle with Riley, which is something they never did in the main series games, which is just sad. Anyway, after defeating Riley, we go through the entirety of Iron Island, 
and then of course go to Byron. Of course Byron has a lot of steel types and I do have a Houndoom which is good against them but the rest of my team doesn't really stand up against them too well except for Gyarados. So I proceed to set up three nasty plots on his first Pokemon Bronzong and then just go for the flamethrower to absolutely scorch it. Pepe then learns Night Slash, he switches in Steelix which also gets one shot and then Agron comes out who manages to live on a Focus Sash so I just keep on flamethrowering until that thing is down and the rest of his team Fortress, Bastiodon and last up Magnezone all go down to some flamethrowers as well. And just like that we have defeated Byron, gained our 6th gym badge which means that we now have to move on to the lake battles against all of the Team Galactic admins. The first one Saturn was just an easy sweep with Gyarados, not gonna lie about that one. Mars was basically the same and how can Dawn even lose against her? The last time I faced Dawn she even beat me. It just doesn't really make sense now, does it? We then travel all the way to Snowpoint City, and here we can see that the Regigigas Temple finally gets some love. But we don't have to do much here, we just have to help these two gym leaders to put Regigigas back to sleep. We didn't even fight it, so how did we put it to sleep? Like, did we just bang it on the head with hammers? I guess it will forever be a mystery. Of course, after helping out Candace, she's also going to have to battle us. I'm just going to start off with Houndoom, and that was a good choice because her lead Pokemon is Abomasnow, which means that one flamethrower finishes it off. While Rain then comes out, I'm predicting a water type move, so I go into Gyarados. I was right and went for the bounce and managed to paralyze it. I then get hit with a blizzard, set up a dragon dance and go for another bounce to take out Walrein. Frostlass then comes out so I try to go for an Aqua Trail but miss because of the snow cloak ability and of course go down to blizzard. Pepe then has to come in to go for the sucker punch, get the priority off and finish Frostlass. Glaceon then proceeds to finish off my Hunchcrow, I go into Sneasel, hit two crunches before also going down and then Bob can come in to flamethrower it and kill it. Mamoswine is up next so I go for the Will-O-Wisp and a flamethrower before going down to Earthquake as well. Crobat can then finish it off, last up is Weavile, two more leech lives and we have won our 7th gem badge. Just like that, we can move on to Cyrus again. Time for another speech. Do you smoke a lot? No, it's a time. You don't smoke a lot, right? Nah. Do you smoke a lot? No. Not Sometimes at all? I do, but now. No, you never smoke, right? No. Once in a while I got it. You don't smoke, right? I smoke sometimes. Sometimes I do, once in a while. I never Lester, smoke. Lester, do you smoke? Me? No, never. Once in a while. Even though he's an imposter, the things he said really hit hard. But after his speech, we do have to have a word with the man. And with a word, I mean having our animals fight to the death. He once again starts off with his Crobat, so I decide to lead with Hunchcrow for some reason. I was able to get one Sucker Punch off before going down to a Brave Bird already. So I go into Noir and finish it off with Ice Punch. His next Pokemon is Magnezone. I'm able to get off two Crunches with Sneasel before I also go down. Then go into Houndoom, Flamethrower that thing and take it down. Then it's Houndoom versus Houndoom, so I set up some nasty plots and go for a Dark Pulse or two, and I come out on top. His second to last Pokemon is Hunchcrow, which I one shot with Flamethrower, and last is Weavile. But Weavile is going to outspeed and finish off Houndoom, so Gyarados has to come in, Dragon Dance up, and an Aqua Tail is easily able to one shot it. After that he gives us a Master Ball, so we set free the Lake Trio after beating up Saturn again. We then travel to Mount Coronet, and up here we have to do another double battle, of course with the last two admins together with our rival. And this is actually a pretty hard double battle because they both have 6 Pokemon, so we're facing 12 Pokemon here. But this battle was way too long to actually sum up. So let's just say that after two attempts I was able to beat them with some trouble. This wasn't easy. Of course the two admins then let us through and see that the imposter Cyrus is summoning Dialga and Palkia in order to bring out Giratina. And so after he rips open a portal, he jumps in because that's just what you do. We go through the entire distortion world and meet up with him again. 
This time he actually has a gauntlet battle, first being Dialga and Palkia, both being at level 70. Luckily, we can take down the Palkia with a combination of my Gyarados and Sneasels as crunches and bounces, but they also managed to take out my Crobat with a Roar of Time and Sneasel with an Aura Sphere. After Palkia get destroyed though, it was only Dialga left, and so the rest of my Pokemon were easily able to finish them off. Now it's time for the real Cyrus battle with his actual team. The dude starts off with Crobat, so I lead off with Gyarados and go for the Dragon Dance. I get hit with a Brave Bird, but an Ice Fang does take it out from full health. Of course, then he's going to go into Magnezone, which I am able to hit with an Aqua Tail before going down to the Thunderbolt. So Sneasel has to come in and Ice Punch it to death. Then Houndoom comes in, so I switch in my own Houndoom predicting a Fire-type move. So we both set up some nasty plots, I then go for Dark Pulses, he for Sludge Bombs, but eventually we both go down at the same time. He then switches in his Gyarados, so I switch in Sneasel again, go for the Ice Punch and then finish it off with Crunch. All because of a lucky freeze. He then sends out his Honchkrow, that thing is of course not going to survive a single attack. Last up is Weavile, so my sadly enough not evolved Sneasel is going down here. So I go into Zoo Batman, finish it off with a Leech Life Psych, it actually still lives. So I have to go into Honchkrow, Sucker Punch it, and now we have defeated Cyrus. After that little encounter, we go to Giratina, of course slap the crap out of that thing too. And we make sure to move on to Volkner next. Volkner has electric types, which is not really that great for our team because we have Gyarados, Crobat, and Hunchcrow, but we're gonna go in anyway. He leads off with his Jolteon, so I lead off with Weavile, and I go for an Ice Punch as he hits me with a Thunderbolt. As I'm trying to go for another one, he switches in Rodom Heat. So I hit that with an Ice Punch, then go for the Crunch, get a critical hit, and that takes it down. Then he goes into Electivire. I go for another Ice Punch, getting the Freeze, and then taking it out with another one. This is actually insane, because Raichu comes out too, and I manage to get another Freeze off, killing it with an Ice Punch and an Ice Shard. Then Luxray finally puts an end to my Weavile's Ravaging. But not before I do some chip damage with Ice Shard. So I go into Crobat because Luxray in this game is actually a dark electric type to hit a leech life and of course that's going to one shot. Jolteon is then able to take out my Crobat so I switch in Hunt's Crow to take it out with Sucker Punch as he then sends in his last Pokemon Rodom Wash. Somehow he is able to outspeed my Hunch Crow and kill me with Thunderbolt. So I try to go into Gyarados but of course no avail, Thunderbolt again. But then Houndoom comes out. Two more Dark Pulses, and the Rodom actually faints, which gives us our final gym badge. Now normally we could just move on to the Pokemon League, right? Well, in this game, we can't. We first have to do the partner thing with Marley down at the Victory Road. So first we have to beat her in a Pokemon battle, then we have to go to her section, and after we bring her to the end of the cave, we're going to have another surprise battle with Dawn. Now I don't want to stack this video too much more with any battles, so I'm just going to say that Marnie was pretty easy, and let's just jump into the Dawn fight. Dawn now leads off with her Alakazam, so I'm going to lead off with Crobat. And I just go for the Leech Life, which of course is going to one-shot this frail thing. The next Pokemon is a Mammoth, so we put that to sleep and put it back underground where it belongs. Vaporeon actually goes down the same way as Mamoswine with the Hypnosis and two Brave Birds, then Lopinny comes out. I'm of course going to try to kill it with Brave Bird, but Fake Out is going to be the end of my Crobat's killing spree. I go into Pepe and try to hit another Brave Bird, but of course a High Jump Kick is going to finish me off from full health. So I go into King and he is easily going to be able to sweep the Lopunny. Torterra is up next, so two Ice Fangs is going to take that thing down easily. And last up is Clefable, which I can hit with one more Aqua Tail before we go down to Moonblast. So Weavile finishes this battle with a nice punch. With Dawn defeated, we can go through the victory road and fight our rival one final time before we actually enter the Elite Four. Of course, he's going to lead off with this trusty Staraptor, so I try to lead off with Weavile, but I get destroyed by a close combat, so I go into Gyarados, set up two Dragon Dances, and an Ice Fang takes care of it. Breloom gets destroyed the same way. Heracross is going down to a bounce, 
Arcanine gets destroyed by Aqua Tail. Snorlax decides to set up a Belly Drum, so an Aqua Tail after that is going to take care of it as well. Last up is of course Empoleon, so I set up one more Dragon Dance before hitting an Aqua Tail and then going down to a Grass Knot Blizzard combo. So I go into Pepe, which immediately gets destroyed by a Hydro Pump. Zubatman hits one more crunch before also going down to a blizzard and then Houndoom can finish off Empoleon with Flamethrower which means that we can move on to Aaron as our first Elite Four member battle. The Elite Four in this game starts off at around level 70 so I'm already pretty underleveled here. But he does start off with his Yanmega so I of course am going to lead with Weavile. I hit an Ice Punch, but that isn't enough, so he bug buzzes me into oblivion. I then switch in Zubatman to try and finish it off with Crunch, but he uses a Potion. Then I try to go for the Brave Bird, but he switches in Heracross. That was probably the worst switch in ever, so he's going down. Armaldo takes a Brave Bird like a champ and hits me with a Stone Edge, taking me down. So King has to come in and do all the work with Aqua Tail. Drapion is his next Pokemon. So I get hit with a Cross Poison, but I set up a Dragon Dance and then proceed to one-shot it. The next two Pokemon, Yanmega and Vespiquen, both get destroyed by Ice Fangs, and last up is Scizor, and two Aqua Tails sweep him off his feet, which means that it's Bertha time, baby. But this is where I realized that my team is totally not up to snuff with anything. I get destroyed by a literal tree. Or three moles can be pretty annoying too. So after losing to Bertha about 10 times, I finally decided to grind the rest of my team up to level 70 since I think that's a pretty fair level for this Elite Four. Bertha starts off with Tyranitar, so I lead off with Weavile and I'm able to hit two Ice Punches before going down to Stone Edge. So I send in King, predicting that she's going to use a Potion, I set up a Dragon Dance and then Aqua Tail it to take it Dune. Rhyperior is a one-shot, Mamoswine is a two-shot, Ductrio is a one-shot too, and then the best Pokemon of all time comes out, Swampert, and he is a little bit of trouble, and Aqua Tail doesn't quite take him down as she uses a Hyper Potion. So I go for the Ice Fang and then a Bounce, and then the Swampert is finally down. Last up is Claydol, and I miss my Aqua Tail, so I go down to a Psychic. So Pepe is going to come in, go for two Night Slashes, and finally finish off this old-ass Wamen. Now it's time for Flint, the fire type guy. I am of course going to lead off with my best Pokemon Gyarados. I then set up three Dragon Dances on his Ninetales because his Solar Beam isn't doing enough damage. Then I go for the Aqua Tail and easily one-shot it. Next up is Macargo, of course that thing isn't going to stand a chance either. But it had a Focus Sash, so it's easily able to finish off my Gyarados with Power Gem. So I go into Pepe, Night Slash it, but he uses a Full Restore, so one more, and the Macargo is Macar dead. Arcanine Flare Blitzes me, and that totally roasts my Crow. So now our Bob can finally shine by setting up a Nasty Plot and then taking down Arcanine with Dark Pulse. Lopunny gets destroyed by Flamethrower, Megmartyr isn't able to do anything against me, so two Dark Pulses and that thing is down as well. And last up is Charizard. And of course he is also going to get one shot, which means that we can move on to the final one, Will, which should not be a problem at all because we got plenty of dark type moves on the team. I am once again going to lead with Gyarados and set up four Dragon Dances on his first Pokemon, Mr. Mime. I show no mercy and a bounce takes out Mr. Mime. He then sends out Espeon, so I try to one-shot it with Ice Fang, but it doesn't quite do enough because of the Reflect, and I of course go down here. So I go into Noir and Crunch it. Then Gallade comes out, but I did learn Shadow Claw to my Weavile, but it just doesn't do enough damage to kill and we get obliterated by close combat. So Crobat has to come in to go for the Brave Bird and finish off this Gallade, Alakazam is up next. He's getting outsped and absolutely drained by Leech Life. Bronzong is a little bit annoying because I tried to put it to sleep twice, but he was able to set up a Reflect and kill my Crobat with two Zen Headbutts because I kept on missing. So I went into Pepe to Night Slash it twice and take it down. Last up is a Metagross. I had one more Sucker Punch before feigning, and then Houndoom can sweep him up with a Dark Pulse. That's the Elite Four defeated, time to head on to Cynthia. Cynthia's first Pokemon is Togekiss, so Gyarados is really my best counter here. I go for two Dragon Dances, then two Ice Fangs, and it's already down and out. 
The next Pokemon she decides to send out is Lucario. And so I go for the Aqua Tail, which is able to take it down from full health. Garchomp is her next choice, so I go for an Ice Fang, but he has a berry which weakens my power, so I get taken out. I go into Noir and finish it off with Ice Punch. Next up is Glaceon and two crunches take care of that. Then my low tick comes out, the Thick Snake. And I hit one more crunch before going down to a Scald. I then go into Zoo Batman, put the Milotic to sleep, and two more Brave Birds take care of it. Her last Pokemon is the Spirit Tomb. So I once again put it to sleep, go for the Brave Bird, then Crunch, then another Brave Bird, and it's down and out. And just like that, we have completed Pokemon Renegade Platinum, an amazing ROM hack that is pretty damn old already, but I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't done it already. As always, let me know in the comments down below what you want me to do next. You can also follow me on the Twitch if that's something that you're interested in. I'm currently still streaming Pokemon Omega Ruby, no EXP, but we will be transitioning into Pokemon Radical Red once it's done. I of course want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Thank you so much, it really goes a long way. And if you want to support the channel yourself, you can click the links in the description. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.